Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. I welcome you to today's devotion with our Daily Fountain, our Church of Nigeria devotional. And today being the 23rd of March, we're looking at the topic, Victory is of God. As you join me this morning to go through the Word of God, I want to welcome you and ask you that you join me as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this morning that you have woken us up. Thank you for the gift of life and the many blessings that we look forward to in the course of the day. We ask, O oh Lord, that your presence would abide with us, even as we go through your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that you reveal to us through your word what you have for us today concerning the topic, Victory is of you. Help our hearts to be open, O oh Lord, even as we trust you to give us the victories of today. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I said before the prayer, we're looking at the topic, Victory is of God. And our text for this morning devotion is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, and verse 1 to 8. I read, Then we returned and went up the road to Bashan. And Og, king of Bashan, came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Adre. And the Lord said to me, Do not fear him, for I have delivered him and all his people and his land into your hand. You shall do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Heshbon. So the Lord our God has delivered into our hands all king of Bashan with all his people, and we attacked him until we, he had no survivors remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we did not take from them, sixty cities, all the region of Agob, the kingdom of Og in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls, gates, and bars, besides a great many rural towns, and we utterly destroyed them, as we did to Sihon, king of Hebron, utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. But all the livestock and the spoil of the cities we took as booty for ourselves. And at that time we took the land from the hand of the two kings of the Amorites, who were on this side of the Jordan, from the river Anon to Mount Hermon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, our topic today is looking at the issue of victory. Victory. It's an act of defeating one's opponent or um, a kind of um, victory over a game or in a contest or a competition. And I'm sure that in one way or the other, we all have experienced victory. Victory brings with it a nice feeling, a good feeling of satisfaction. It gives you a, a kind of inner joy because there is triumph over something that you have put yourself to do. And a lot of times when we feel victory or victorious over something, there is a kind of feeling of satisfaction because we feel it is a reward for the effort we have put into achieving something. While celebrating victory, a lot of times we may consider that it is the effort that we have put into that thing that brought about the victory. Well, our topic today is drawing our hearts back to the Word of God to assure us that whatever effort we put into something, the victory ultimately comes from God. It will be not worthwhile to see that there are situations where others may even put in more effort into achieving something, but at the end of the day, they may not come out victorious. So whatever that feat is that we celebrate, let us always remember that God is the giver of victory. 
Our passage today takes us um, back to the time of the Israelites under the servant of God Moses while they took over lands that God had promised them. It retells the story of the Israelites when they went against the king Og of Bashan. Prior to that, they had also defeated this, uh, king Sihon, as we read in our passage. And the Lord gave them the assurance from his own uh, words that indeed they will be victorious. As we look at the passage, we see that victory from God was ultimately gotten because the word of God was involved. And I can only imagine that the Israelites were able to conquer up to one, two, three, till they counted the 60th city. That is what our passage this morning tells. What a massive victory they must have encountered that day. And what came to my mind again as I read was that it wasn't as if the city of Bashan was a bare city. It was well fortified with great city walls. And it said they have also gates. They had bars and they had so many towns within that city. But because the word of God came, indeed they were victorious. We only look at the story of the passage we read from the perspective of the Israelites. But I know that there was the other side of the story, which is the perspective of the people of Bashan. They also uh, had their own efforts that they put into fortifying their city. They also walked, they also fought, but at the end of it, we see that victory was on the side of the Israelites who only went with the word of God. Looking at it from the perspective of um, the people of Bashan, I look at it that they put so much effort into fortifying their city. The Bible records that they had walls, city walls, built all around their city. They also had gates. They also had bars, which are strong metals put to ensure that whatever the enemy's advances are, that they do not penetrate their city. And also, I'm sure they were battle ready for that attack. Because we see, if we go back a bit in the passage, you will see where um, they were asked to give passage to the children of Israel and they refused. Now looking at this, we know that it wasn't just a careless people who did not earn victory at the end of the day because of their laziness or because they were carefree about the whole thing. But they prepared, they had fortified walls and all. But at the end of it, victory was not recorded in their favor. And indeed, I'm sure that there was something fearful about the people of Bashan. Because we see God's word coming to reassure the Jews that they should not be afraid of him. That I have already delivered him into your care. And I see God coming in to encourage his children whenever there is something fearful that we have to face in life and the word of god came to encourage them god comes in such ways to encourage his children if we cast our minds back to joshua chapter 1 and verse 9 where god was encouraging his son joshua not to be afraid he should be strong and of good courage and that he should not be afraid I also see Jesus with his disciples in different passages where he was encouraging them, giving them strength by leaving them with his peace or telling them not to be afraid. So for God to have assured the children of Israel not to be afraid, it means there must have been something fearful about the city of Bashan. Of course, when you look at the walls and all they have put in place to ensure that their city is fortified, it can be fearful when you think of attacking them. But at that point in time, the word of God came and it was for them not to be afraid. Verse 3 confirms to us through the word of God. And I take verse 3 again. 
So the Lord our God also delivered into our hands Og, king of Bashan, with all his people, and we attacked him until he had no survivors remaining. This confirms to us that indeed this victory came to the children of Israel because the Lord had already delivered the people of Bashan into their hands. It was not all about the effort they put into the war. It was not about their labor. It was not about their war skills that brought them victory, but because the word of God says so. And people of God, I want to um, ask this morning, because as I was meditating on this passage, that was what came to my mind. And I was wondering, are there no times that we, like the children of Bashan or the uh, inhabitants of Bashan, behave in such a way that we think victory comes to us because we deserve it, because we have worked for it, because we have put so much effort into you know, uh, achieving success in whatever uh, thing we put our hearts to achieve. A lot of times we do that. But the word of God is coming to assure us this morning that it is not about the effort we put in. It doesn't take away the place of planning, of preparing, or of hard work. But it is the place of recognizing that whatever effort we put into doing something, whatever the labor, whatever the commitment, whatever the focus we have on something, that until the Lord hands over that victory unto us, it may not be ours at the end of the day. So it is a call for me in my own heart, first and foremost, that whatever effort I am putting into whatever I am doing, that I should be able to recognize the place of the victory giver whose victory is ultimate. I will go ahead and prepare for whatever it is I want to be successful in. I will go ahead and be um, uh, dedicated. I will be focused. I will give my best to achieving that, but not forgetting that God is the giver of victory. That is taking a lesson from the children of Bashan. Are there areas that we are looking for victory in? Which I am sure we are. There are so many areas of our lives as individuals that if we have, you know, um, the choice of making, we want to be victorious because that is how I feel. There are areas I want to be victorious. But I have to go back to the drawing board, starting with God, because I see that the people of Bashan missed it at that point because they didn't have the God factor. They didn't have the confidence that God is the giver of victory for them to depend on him. And um, in our daily fountain, we have um, the commentary that is given for us. And I would also want us to take a look at it before we round up for the day. And I read, Israel's journey to the land of promise was full of wars with many nations as they sojourned to Canaan. However, the Lord was with them and assured them of victory at every point in time. The Lord delivered these nations with their kings and lands into the hands of the Israelites as he promised. Note that in our text, the cities were 60 in number, greatly fortified with high and lofty walls, which was seemingly an impossible task to achieve. But the unchanging great God made it possible to defeat all those nations due to all his surpassing power to conquer any stronghold. Beloved, wars in the journey to our promised land, that is heaven, is part of the Christian race. So as children of God, we are confronted with many seen and unseen wars, but the Lord has promised us his presence and deliverance. Some of such confrontations might be quite fierce and impossible to overcome by our human abilities as in our text today. The keys to victory are to fear not, 
refuse to be intimidated by the enormous size of challenge and impossibilities of the situation. Listen to God at every point in time to get directives for action and judiciously obey his biddings. What challenges are you facing? Apply these keys and you shall convert the words into testimony to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Just like our commentary rightly says, I want to just lay emphasis on this part that talks about our spiritual journey. That is the journey we are having here to go towards heaven. As Christians, we know that we are running a race. And the race we are running is really a difficult one. I equate it to the story we have just read, just like the city of Bashan. It had strongholds. It had walls. It had barriers. So also is our Christian race. And we know that there are times we are faced with difficulties, oppositions that look almost impossible to achieve, to pass through. But the word of God is encouraging us, especially this morning, that if we're looking up to God to have victory into making heaven from this part of eternity, that there are things we need to do, which is looking up to God to grant us that victory that comes from him alone. Just as our commentary is um, encouraging us to do this morning, that it doesn't matter the size of the challenges we're facing. It doesn't matter the walls we see ahead of us. All we need to know and to have as you know, a propelling force ahead of us is that God is the giver of victory. And when instructions come from the word of God as it is coming to us this morning, it will be wise of us to take those instructions to heart because an instruction came to the children of Israel for them not to be afraid. And it takes courage to go against what looks like an opposition, especially when you think it is beyond you. So listening to the word of God is also an aspect we have to learn from the word of God because when the word came for them to go ahead, they did not hesitate. They went and captured up to 60 cities, as it was recorded for our encouragement this morning. Listening to God also means you have to know the voice of God when it comes. As a believer, do we know the word of God? Do we know his voice? Can we distinguish the voice of God when it comes to us? With words of instruction for us to obey because they must have heard and Moses being a servant of God knew the voice of God so when the instruction came from God for them to take this victory by the wings of God's hands they did not hesitate to do it so there are lessons for us to uh, learn just like um, our meditation is pointing us to do today and I will just itemize them as we round up our meditation number one is that if we know victory is of god we must know that indeed god is the giver of victory he is the one who gives victory it doesn't matter how much we have prepared we need to understand and re always remember that victory is of god also, winning victory does not take away the place of preparation. If we want to be victorious, we must prepare ourselves for victory and then wait for God to give it unto us. We also see that before victory can be earned, it means there are obstacles. So when those obstacles come, they do not come to discourage us. Instead, they come for us to know that indeed it is not out of our own strength we are uh, having this victory and then also the word of god when it comes we have to be able to understand when it is uh, the voice of god that is speaking because when god speaks we must know that this instruction is really from god in order for us to obey and then be willing to obey and then also that from the word of God, we must know that there must always be obstacles. But at the end of it all, victory.
comes from above. Just like our meditation asks, what are those challenges we are facing today? There is still hope for victory. And when victory comes, let us not forget to ascribe glory to whom the victory came from. That is God who is the giver of victory. We are going to pray and commit all that we are doing into the hands of God. That as we begin our day, we will entrust all the battles we will be facing, all the preparedness we will be uh, putting ourselves through today in order to achieve success. That through it all, the Lord will give us victory at the end of it all. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? As in the words of our daily fountain, our prayer is, May you continue to fight my battles, Lord, for I am weak, but you are mighty. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your word that has come clearly to us to recognize the place of victory as coming from you. We thank you, O Lord, that you have already handed us victory even for today and for always. We know that you gave us the eternal victory in your Son, Jesus Christ, by sending him to die on the cross for us. That is the ultimate victory we have. But we plead, O Lord, in our day-to-day -day struggle, in this part of eternity, as we struggle to make heaven, we ask, O Lord, that, Father, you will give us the little victories we need from day to day in order to make this race an easy one for us by your grace. And we ask, O Lord, as we step out to begin our day, that your Holy Spirit will direct us to give us instruction on how to earn these victories, that when we hear his voice coming, we will know that distinctly this is your voice speaking, and we will be willing to obey and follow, that at the end of it all we shall be victorious, because you are the giver of victory. And Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will send us on our way rejoicing. Even as we go out to begin our day, we go out as conquerors, because your word has assured us that we are indeed more than conquerors through Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you for watching and thank you for joining us for the devotional today. We ask that your way be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.